Greetings viewers, welcome back to the Alienated Dads Network, where we strive to support and uplift fathers facing challenges in the modern world. I'm your host, Jason Affield, and I'm thrilled to be here with you today to shed light on important issues and provide valuable insights. Join me on this transformative journey as we navigate the complexities of fatherhood and I suppose, well, life as well, I suppose. Here's what I want to talk about. It's quite superficial and it's going to be how superficial the world is. And it starts at a young age. It starts with the youth. It's generational, isn't it? It's generational. Here's the deal. Like, you've got kids as young as 12 or 13 pressing send on nude photos and it's like everyone's wondering why. But think about it. They've got role models cashing in on snaps and clout online driving Ferraris and flaunting lifestyle, a lifestyle that screams, you don't need a bunch of school if you can just look good in pictures. I'm gonna picture this, like, you're a guy stuck in a maths class, bored out of your mind with theorems and calculations that feel a million miles away from anything real to you. Then you take a peek at your phone and there's some dude hollering in Maldives all because he's got millions of likes. The question becomes algebra or influencer. I think it's a no-brainer, don't you? Algebra? Influencer? Let me think. Now, I know a guy, his older sister got the right advice growing up when she started noticing boys noticing her. Dad was well on point. He told her, he said, smarts, smart as important as it is pretty. So being smart is as, as important as it is being pretty. Don't fall for the hype around looks. If that's all someone sees in you, they're missing the point. Stay true, stay savvy, stay you. I've passed that same message on to my daughter. And here's, here's something weird going on with me online. I'll post some blog about philosophy or father's rights or something, right? And then I'm swamped with comments about either my haircut or like what I've said or how I look. So, okay, thanks. I can, I can talk about the actual topic for a second. It seems like if you're, if you're a guy who's decent looking, and I'm not saying I am, but if you're, you're, you're expected, that's what you're expected to be. You're either going to be really good looking or if you have a brain, it's not important. Don't worry about a brain, it's, it's not there at all. You don't, you, and first of all, you're only supposed to mix the two. Spoiler alert, you can mix them. The brain's going to stick around a lot longer than your six pack. Just putting it out there. It, it hit on me one time. All, all, put all your chips in, on, on looking buff and, and I'm never going to look buff. I'm never going to look buff, that's for sure. And, and if you put all your chips into that and the crowd, that's the crowd pleaser, you're going to pull. And the people you pull who play life on a surface level, who turn head over heels for the next tight shirt or next new sneaker drop, who can't see past your bench presses or who you actually really are. Where's the fun in that? It's hollow. Develop your strength in here, just here, it's like in the center. And you attract people playing the long game. The deep talkers, long hike on a Sunday sort of folk. That's what grows roots in a relationship. It makes you wonder. Turns out there's more to be, more to a strong bond than just flexing or sharing a bank account. Being connected goes deeper. You've got to hit that sweet spot. It's like where you're vibing mentally, emotionally, and I suppose, I suppose economically as well, to be honest. That's, that's what it is. You need to do that to be able to build something, build something as a relationship at least anyway. What's, what's the play for? How do you value yourself when you, the rules seem flipped? When being brand famous, seems to count for more than putting, putting in the work. It's time we big up the brain, I think. The brain, the brain, the brain. And charge up our hearts as well as sharpen up our selfies. We've got, we've got to get real about valuing ourselves on more than just the cool factor. I know I'm getting old and that's probably why I'm saying this, but everyone checks their reflection. Girls, guys, doesn't matter. It's, but that's, but let's reflect on that too. We're defining worth because that'll tell you everything you need to know. That'll tell you where we're at the society and where we are we're, we're following the generations. We're aiming, where we're aiming to, and it's time to balance the scoreboard. It's skill up both off screen and the real you off screen. On screen, off screen, it's still the same. As men navigating the intricate world of relationships, which I don't do anymore, but we often find ourselves pondering the age old question of how do we recognize a good woman when we find her? How? Today, I want to delve a little bit deeper into that if I get time, and this inquiry will unveil the qualities that define a truly remarkable partner. And you hopefully will join me at the end if you make it that far, because I think it's one of the last things that I have to say. It's about five or six points, and what you should look at to 
in an ideal relationship, in an ideal good woman. Here's where we're at, right? Men have been pigeonholed. You might not like me saying that, but we have. There's, there's this idea of a float that if you're a guy bringing home the bacon, pound after pound, then you're the man. You're supposedly become the high status, high value dude, just because you've got a fat wallet. Sadly, the truth hits hard. If all you've stacked your worth on is money, you may just end up with a partner who's riding on that same currency train, but in their own separate carriage. At the start, it's all gonna be love bombing and lovely and nice, but it's always gonna be the same. Now picture this, right? You've made your fortune, the world is at your feet, and you think, why aren't we close? When I'm giving her everything money can buy, but that's just it. It's all money can buy. There's no emotional connection, no shared passion, no just 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 transactional. If there's no quality time, no heartfelt interest beyond materialistic things, it doesn't matter how many zeros are in your bank. And here's the kicker: a partner who's emotionally detached isn't going to be bothered if you've gone months on end, as long as the luxury keeps coming. And while you're away, the cat will play, or the mice will play. You think why leave relationships, women and riches? But it's all about the loot, the money. There's nothing stopping them from scouting new horizons. Nothing, never being satisfied. Always looking for an upgrade. We were left steamrolled by our own expectations because we played into a weak bond. The superficial have not helped. Now, this could be where you understand the implications of living in a big city like London, I suppose, where it's clear, it's much more clear, I've seen it directly. And I take it from someone who's been around a bit, getting old now. But places like London, where splendor might as well be the sidewalk. In the simple life of smaller townships, such dramas aren't muzzle loaded into the day to day. My reach takes me to those banged up by, those, by these high stakes expectations, struggling with the same dilemmas, which are infidelity and the pioneering drive for more always wanting more. The naked truth of infidelity, this isn't, it's never one-sided. There's a staggering disconnect when it comes to the cheater's emotions. Discussions happen silently within the whole narrative twisted so guilt seems an alien word. And how do we know these secrets, you might ask? Whispered confessions, patterns emerging, men are falling to failing to be men, in the classical sense, they're failing to be men, Women ditch true femininity, and in these gaps, deception blooms. And we're talking, we talk about femininity and masculinity. I see a man allowing his boundaries to be trampled on because he's setting them up wrong, has just lost half the battle. But both men and women each have to command space, know their worth, and reinforce their cornerstones of mutual respect, of needs anticipated and met. Flip to the ladies cheated on. Now we're not talking about surface swipes, no, no, no. Here we're, we're, it's about ignoring something deeper. The abusive abstinence of acknowledging a partner's needs. It might just be anticipating the small ask of a coffee warmed up because it's 6 a.m. And, and the world's rough, rough enough already. Intimacy, support, understanding. When that stops being intuitive, the bond starts unraveling. That's from my own personal experience. But slap on a discussion about vulgarity and to feminism, what would they say about this? They would say, men are not children. They are not our project to baby. True, we're not about infantilizing anyone, anyhow, any more than self-care means you're not self-absorbed. We're talking about nurturing mutual, mature support it's the kind that grounds, not grounds, not, it's, it's kind of grounds, well, not, not grounds down actually, not grounds down. And via these shared needs, not the nanny care list, we forget simple truths. Relationships are as functional as the bonds are genuine. Women nurture, men support. Flip the sentence as you see fit. Every mix has its own beat underneath. We're fighting it, a, jig, a jigsaw puzzle, without borders. A cross-stitch spanning emotions and responsibilities we take on. Complex, yes, for sure, absolutely. Knowingly simplistic? No, not anymore. Good men, good women, all sides leading the dance. Fumbling, although aiming for a tune that's more than money. That's a, um, a, 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 
A minimalist, Chump, uh, chumping minimalist. What becomes our rallying cry, understanding both femininity and masculinity, that complex crossover? Find your stance before mercenary desires become commodity. Your heart gets traded for. It's a relational economic that in time where attention spans are playing mercury and authenticity is still fetching a premium over placebo solutions. Here's the Sudoku of a generation. They won't tally arithmetic where substance and soul balance against fiscal stats and virtual braces. Love, loyalty, it's an old school money can't buy. And inside that truth, real conversations start. With that in mind, and the moment you've been waiting for, here's my tips on qualities to look out for in good women. Empathy and compassion is huge for me. A good, good woman will possess a gift, the gift of empathy and the ability to understand and share the feelings of another. She listens attentively, offers support without judgment and stands by your side through thick and thin. Her compassion shines through in her actions, showing kindness and understanding, even in the most challenging moments. And that's something that Bandana had magically. I do miss her. Independence and strength, again, something that quality that Bandana had, and one that I took, a, took, took for granted. I found my purpose, which is good, but at the cost of a soulmate, potentially. Independence is the hallmark of a good woman, showcasing her inner strength and resilience. She stands tall in her individuality, pursuing her passions and goals with unwavering determination. A partner who values her independence brings sense of the sense of balance, I suppose, into the relationship, fostering mutual growth and respect. Respect is obviously key, growth and respect. Trust and communication. Without trust, without communication, the relationship ends. It's over. If you've got no trust and no communication, it's not going to work. It's the foundation of a strong, lasting relationship. And a good woman will uphold this value with integrity. She communicates openly and honestly, and it's down to you to receive that communication, sharing her thoughts and feelings with transparency. In her presence, you find a safe space to express yourself, knowing that your words will be heard and respected. Loyalty and support. Now, I don't think... I've come across this in a relationship, whether it be a platonic relationship, apart from Vandana, or in a sexual relationship, including my wife. A good woman remains steadfast in her loyalty, standing by your side through triumphs and tribulations. She is your biggest cheerleader, offering unwavering support, encouraging you through life's ups and downs. Her loyalty is a beacon of strength in the storm and a constant presence that you can rely on. I have not been able to rely on anybody, and I shouldn't be able to have to I don't think I ever will, apart from myself. And that's what I say, you can only ever rely on you. Only ever rely on you. Now, the signs of being with a good woman, well, they're there, if you want to see them. She celebrates your success. It's not just about her. She doesn't want to be like pulling you down. She's going to be celebrating your success hugely. I said she's your number one fan. A good woman rejoices in your achievements and your milestones, sharing in your jubilation and joy. She uplifts you, champions your ambitions, and celebrates your your successes as if they were her own she will have genuine happiness for you and come and you will see that in how she acts and her admiration for you as well these people do exist i'm told but she will also respect your autonomy now by this i mean she'll like if you want some space like me i'm like i like my space i like my individuality my, my own space respect respect is the cornerstone of any healthy relationship uh, and a good woman honours your autonomy and individuality. She values your opinions and trusts your decisions and supports your personal growth and aspirations. In her eyes, you are a partner, not a possession. And she respects the boundaries that, that, that define your individuality. Again, apparently these people do exist. I'm not sure if I've met them yet, but they do exist. Now, she nurtures your emotional intimacy. Maybe I'm just listing down what I'm looking for in a relationship. Maybe that's what it is. But she, she nurtures your emotional intimacy. And that, by that, I mean, that she, for me, emotional intimacy is a sacred bond between two souls. A good woman nurtures this connection with a tenderness and care. She creates a space for vulnerability and honesty, fostering deep emotional intimacy that transcends surface levels interactions. In her embrace, she finds solace, understanding, and a profound sense of connection that transcends words. In other words, words cannot describe what you're feeling when you are holding her close to you. And she stands by you in adversity, when things are really shit, when things are really bad. She's going to be there with you. 
the true test of a relationship lies in how partners weather storms together. Now, a good woman stands by your side unwaveringly in times of adversity. She offers a hand to hold, a shoulder to lean on, and a heart that beats in, in rhythm to yours during life's toughest challenges. Her unwavering presence in the face of hardship speaks volumes about her strength of character, and I suppose the commitment to your shared journey. Apparently, they do exist. Now, keep your eyes peeled, folks, because if they do, if they are out there, you will only get them by, meet them by having your own standards, not accepting the it will do. If it's effort, it's too much effort.